Hello, YouTubers everywhere, and welcome to my review of another blockbuster to grace off cinema screens this month. Today, I am going to be reviewing Tomorrowland, A World Beyond, starring George Clooney. So, yes, the plot of Tomorrowland is that... Um, after almost getting arrested, this young teenager stumbles upon this pin that projects this other world before her eyes when she touches it. And uh, she has been basically chosen to kind of change future because the people from the other world are projecting images, well, ideas into everyone's head that, you know, that, you know, Earth is, well, that their world is going to die. But you know, and and all that jazz. It gets a bit complex, but that's and she basically is called upon. She gets just to bark on a quest with George Clooney and this other little girl who um, gave her the pin in order to stop the evil guys from you know going ahead with their dastardly plan. So yeah, apologies if that plot description was a bit vague, but that's as best as I could sum it up. Anyway, so. Tomorrowland, a world beyond. Um, right. So, I kind of went into this with no expectation. I didn't really... Like, I watched the trailer and I just, I just thought, eh, it's either going to be good or bad. And, you know, I like Brad Bird as a filmmaker. I think he's good. I don't think he's anything amazing, but he's made some pretty great films. I mean, I really loved Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. I'm really looking forward to Rogue Nation. Um... I also liked Ratatouille, that was good. I also liked The Incredibles, that was really good. This, I don't know, I don't think it's his best work. I honestly don't. I have to say, I was kind of disappointed with this film, to be quite honest. I mean, the trailer made it look somewhat interesting, so I commend the, the, you know, the editor of the trailer you know, for that. But ultimately, it just seemed very dull. That's probably the best way I can describe it. It was just dull. I, I, I don't know what really was going on half the time. I mean, you know, first of all, there are some major problems with this film, and I have to sort of point these out. I mean, uh, the pacing. The movie is a little bit shoddily paced from the beginning. Uh, the beginning, like, the first 30 minutes are, like, padding. It is slow. Uh, it does take its time, Um I mean, I'm all for character de character development, but at least make it interesting. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, and I mean, if you're gonna have, you know, if you're gonna have the the heroine's sort of family in the movie, make them relevant. You know, her dad and her brother weren't were hardly in the movie. They weren't really relevant to the plot. They were just there. They were just there. You know, because, you know, the fact that she's a teenager, it's like, oh, well, young kids are going to see this movie. They've got to have somebody to relate to. And, you know, her personality um, as, as a character, she comes across as a little bit feisty, sassy. I, I don't know, just very... She, she has an attitude uh, about her, not necessarily in a bad way, but... Um, she's an interesting one. I mean, don't get me wrong, <laughs> my God, she looks hot. She is... She is attractive as hell, but, um, yeah. Um, and to be honest, the character really just is along for the ride. She just kind of gets caught up in all this, and then she only really becomes relevant towards the end. So they didn't really spend time developing any of the characters in this film, I have to be honest here. Apart from George Clooney's character, really, um, who in the beginning we are introduced to as a boy. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's Parachute Walker. I can't talk to him right now. I will talk to him later. Um, but yeah, we're introduced to him as a boy, and that, that is an interesting sequence. I didn't really understand sort of how it fed in, how him, you know, making the jetpack really sort of had any relevance to the story, but it was nice to see, you know, how he how he sort of became, how he, how he got to the land, um, and how he met Athena and stuff. Um... <coughs> To be honest, it, it does take a while for them to get to Tomorrowland. It does feel like the movie takes its time to do nothing. Like it's like let's just have another action scene. Let's just have another scene in the car with. Let's have another argument scene. You know, it, it, a lot of it is just filler. I mean, it, it, I was 
dozing off during it. I'm not going to lie, I nearly dozed off. Um, I mean, there were a few things that kept me going. Um, it's not completely terrible. I think there are redeeming qualities. Um, the little girl that plays Athena, and I believe her name is... I just want to scroll down here. Her name is Raffi Cassidy. Um, her performance is absolutely terrific. I think she is one of the best child actors I've ever seen on screen. I think her her performance is absolutely captivating. She's also a badass. Man, in those action scenes, you know, she kicks ass. I mean, I, I think she's fantastic. Um, she really is. I mean, the best performance in the entire movie has got to go to her. Um, as for the other cast, I mean, George Clooney is just George Clooney, and he will always be George Clooney. That's probably the best way to sum up his character. So I'm not going to dwell anymore on George Clooney. He's just there, and he does what he does. And he's, you know, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of George Clooney, but I can tolerate him. Um, I like um, I like Britt Robertson, her name is, as Ka uh, no, not Cassie, Casey. Um, Casey. Uh, she's, she's cool. Um, yeah, like I, I talked about her sort of personality traits earlier. And the actress is hot, which is cool. <laughs> um, like I said, as a character, they kind of didn't make her really relevant. I mean, they tried to introduce her family and stuff, but I think the problem is this movie is kind of doing a battle with itself. It's trying to introduce too many plot elements, too many characters, just too many inconsistencies. It, it felt disjointed to me. There were parts of the film when I kind of felt a bit confused. I was like, hang on, what's going on here? Because I'm trying to follow this. It's, it's a hard movie to follow. Um, also, um, you know, Hugh Laurie, I guess he is sort of the main villain of the story. He doesn't do all that much, to be fair. It would have been nice to see him do a bit more, but nonetheless, he's good. Uh, there is a fantastic, cool, funny moment when he does um, say a word. I'm not going to say what word it is, but it is quite funny. <laughs> it's during the end. Um, and, you know, there are a couple of, like, you know, touching moments in there. There are some really sweet, you know, there are some emotional scenes in there. It's not really enough to save the movie, but it's enough to make you go, oh, you know, you know, there are times when you go, well, this is quite nice, you know, especially a, a scene towards the end, uh, which is quite sad, I'm not going to say. Um, yeah, and uh, as the action's okay. Uh, it's, it's nothing revolutionary. It's just a load of gunfire and explosions, but, you know, it's not done in the Transformers-esque style, so it's pretty cool. It does have a fun... The movie does have a fun adventure feel to it, so kids are going to be entertained, but the problem is the movie is too long. <laughs> it is two hours, ten minutes. That is way too long for a film like this, I think. You know, I think it should have been cut. It could lose at least at least 20 minutes of its runtime. It could lose at least 20 minutes. And as for Brad Bird's direction, um, it's okay. As I said, I don't think it's his best direction. I think there's too many... I think there's a bit too much going on in this film. I think that's kind of a big distraction. There are some cool scenes. like There's some good argument scenes um, with the characters. Um, and there are some cool action scenes. But th there's good individual scenes. And there's some nice comedy. But as a whole film, it feels a little bit like a bit of a jumbled mess. And it doesn't quite know where it wants to go. I mean, I was sitting there... My friend kind of, he found it a bit long as well. Um, I went to see it with my friend. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's not a complete flop. I mean, there is going to be, it's going to be entertaining for kids. I mean, I, I didn't see it in 3D, so I'm not going to comment on that. I don't even know if it was in 3D, to, to, be, to be fair. I mean, but yeah, um, I think it's, it's all right. It's all right. I, I would never go out of my way to watch it again. Um... What was the whole point of, you know, Casey breaking into the um, NASA? You're like, like I said, you know, the first kind of like the first half an hour is filler. It's padding like it's, the movie's too long and it starts out pretty slowly. It doesn't really have a destination where it wants to go. There's a really cool scene in the um, in a shop, um, which which turns into a bit of a chaotic scene um, in a good way, which is really cool. I, I really like seeing that. Um but, um, yeah, and obviously visually the CGI is, is you know, great. Yeah, I mean, visual effects-wise and CGI, no problem there. Sound is good, production values are great. It looks it looks good. It, it's a, it's a good-looking film. Um, but it's, for me, style over substance. I mean, I kind of like the concept, but I find it intriguing. But 
it's nothing more than intrigue. I don't, I don't really, I don't love the concept. I don't, I don't worship it or anything. I, I think it's, um, it's intriguing, but they could have made more of it. It gets a bit messy. <laughs> uh, the script is good in terms of the dialogue. The dialogue's good, but the writing, in terms of the story, it's a bit disjointed and it feels padded out. It feels too long. Uh, I mean, at, and the end, it just kind of ends very abruptly to me. Um, it feels like they're trying to set up. It feels like the movie had too many endings. Like they were trying to end it sooner and sooner. But once they revealed sort of everything, then they had a big climax, and it was like they started. It was like they were starting another film. It was like it was like they were starting a, the sequel at the end of this film. So, I mean, I think this movie kind of leaves it open for a sequel. It doesn't necessarily set up, but it kind of it kind of leaves it open. So, I would imagine that they're intending this to be a franchise, but I don't really. I can't see that happening unless the box office proves otherwise. But yeah, pretty much it, it, it's it's okay. It's 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 not it's not bad. But you know, it, it will entertain the kids. It will entertain kids. But it is way too long. It is slowly paced at the beginning. Not enough character development. Just shoddily written in terms of the story. The structure is kind of a bit shoddy. The writing's not bad. The acting is really good from the most most of the cast. Um, Visuals are nice, just wasted potential. Uh, really, it's it's not going to amaze you. It's not going to make you like go. It's not going to make you rant about it. But it's something to rant about. But at the end of the day, it's okay. I'm going to rate this movie probably about five out of ten. Yeah, I know, a little bit harsh, but what can you do? So yeah, that is my review of Tomorrowland or Beyond. Um, what do you think of the movie? Please comment down below. Let me know. Uh, would I recommend this? Well, not not really. Um, but if you're planning to see it, I'm not going to stop you. So, you know, it's not like if you see it, your life will be any different. Like, yeah, so don't worry about that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this review. And as always, I'm Mr. Tyler's 11. See ya.